light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Faster, boy, faster! It was noon when the two riders reached Death Canyon. They eased their mounts through the scrub trees which fringed the sandy wastes and guided them along the hot, dusty trail which snaked across the basin toward Sutter's Gulch. The leader wore a black mask and silver-mounted six guns within easy reach of his lean, strong hands. His companion was a grave-faced Indian. Their eyes, as they rode, were fixed intently on the blue-ridged mountains which ringed the canyon, searching for a sign of the danger which they knew to lurk somewhere within that peaceful mountain scene. There's where the Indians hide out, Tonto. Those hills. Ah. The railroad men claim they've gone to those mountains after every raid. Why Indians only attack railroad supply wagons? I don't know, Kimosabe. They don't seem to bother the other wagon trains. Ah. Not one of the four supply trains sent out by the railroad has gotten through. We look for Indians, maybe find camp. Not now. Dan's waiting for us in Sutter's Gulch. Uh, That's right. When we get there, we'll talk with the railroad men, and we'll know how to proceed. Who's silver? Who's silver? What is it, Kimosabe? Oh, me not sure. I think me see smoke. Ah, you look. Yes, it is smoke. Indians. Uh, That signal fire. Can you read it? No, it too far. Me not make it out. There's a ridge dead ahead. We should be able to see what it says from there. Uh, get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh, Scout. Oh, 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 oh. We'll climb up to that ledge, Tonto. We can see clearly from there. Uh-huh. Now, see if you can make out what the smoke means. Ah, me read it now. Signal fire, summon braves to war council. War council? Ah. I wonder. Indians. Ah, then surround us. Wait, Tonto. We can't fight those Indians. Too many of them. We'll try something else. Standing side by side with their backs to the edge of the rocky ledge and a 90-foot fall beyond them, the Lone Ranger and Tonto stood waiting while the Indians came close. And the masked man held both hands high, palms toward the savages, and shouted, Stand where you are! Now, me tell him in Indian tongue. Huga Menikte, Gahiba Mula. Your chief will be angry. He who comes as friend of Indians must not die. Take us to your leader. He wants a powwow. Ah, uh, Waga, Muhuga, chief! 
Surprised by the actions of the Lone Ranger, whom they expected gunplay, the Indians turned to one another in confusion. The figure before them showed no trace of fear. Instead, as Tonto translated, he promised them grim punishment if they attacked. There will be no eagle feathers, no hunting. You'll be punished as you've never been punished before. Your chief's anger will be great. It is my command that you take me to him. With the Lone Ranger and Tonto closely guarded in the center of a tight circle of warriors, the Indians rode with their prisoners toward their village. As they reached the outskirts, the drums of the war council throbbed, then broke as the tribe saw the masked man and his friend approaching. That must be the chief coming now, Tonto. Ah, him chief spotted deer. Let's do the animal, uncle. My friend and I come in peace. Mash man speak with forked tongue. Him enemy, my people. I, I don't understand. Many moon ago, white men come from Sutter Gulch and wear mask like you. Oh. And bring fire water for my brave. Promise plenty booty. Then white men lead Indian to attack wagon train. I see. Soon soldier come from fort, make war on my people. Burn my village. Get revenge. But spotted deer get revenge first. Him strike now at masked men in Sutter Gulch. Listen. Listen to me. Why we listen to white man who hide face. Him like other who come here. Make trouble for my people. I want to help your people, spotted deer. Ah, uh, him not like others. If you attack Sutter's Gulch, you'll not only kill your enemies, but innocent men, women, and children. Then the soldiers will seek revenge. You not stop Indian now. Wait, wait. If I promise you that the outlaws will be punished... Spotted deer not listen to empty promise. You one are enemies. Now you die. Wait. How can I prove to you that I speak the truth? Brave men speak with straight tongue. Coward with crooked tongue. You want test... Yes. Uh, we give you fire test. Then we know. Grasping the masked man's arms, the Indians rapidly bound his wrists with leather thongs. Then they tied him to a stake around which the women and children had piled brushwood. At the old chief's command, the brush was lighted. In a moment, a circle of flames roared about the straight, still figure of the Lone Ranger. The Indians chanted exultantly and beat their drums even more fiercely as the fire crept closer and closer to the masked man. Suddenly, silence cut sharply through the village, and all eyes watched intently for the slightest sign of fear which might show on the white man's face. All ears listened for the smallest whimper of pain. The fire crackled beneath his boots and flamed up along the post to which he was tied, but the Lone Ranger faced the ordeal calm and unafraid. And as the fire licked hungrily at the still, straight figure, Tonto struggled frantically with his own bindings to save his friend. Then Spotted Deer intervened. Pale face, brave warrior. Not show sign of fear. Cut loose. Mass man and Indian free. Bring horse. I promise you that the outlaws who are your enemies will be punished, Spotted Deer. Brave man, speak with straight tongue. Indian, believe you. Many of your warriors are missing. Uh, them not listen to spotted deer. Them ride, meet mass men, attack wagon train. When? Where? Tonight. Death pass. Hello. Uh, me come. That wagon train is a railroad supply caravan. Oh, uh, that right. This will be the fifth attempt the railroad has made to ship supplies to Sutter's Gulch. If it fails... Company will change the route and avoid the town. Um, that hurt town plenty bad. It will hurt the railroad too. I'll have to lay several hundred miles of extra track to swing around Death Canyon. And what we do? You ride to meet Dan Kimosabi. I'll go to warn the wagon train. Ah, uh, go. We'll meet later. Get him up, scout. Silly big fella. <laughs> Adios, chief. You make war on masked men and make trouble for my people. They'll be punished. Come on, Silver. <laughs>
Meanwhile, in Sutter's Gulch, Dan Reed, the Lone Ranger's 14-year-old nephew, awaited the arrival of the masked man in Tonto. Reining in his horse at the hitching rail, he sat on the porch of the Bartlett Wagon Express, where he could watch the trail. Behind him, through the open window of the express office, he could hear two men talking. The voice of one he recognized as Lane Bartlett's owner of the Wagon Express. Then suddenly, Dan became alert to what they were saying. Golly, they're talking about the raids on the railroad supply wagons. I can't hear everything they're saying, but what I did hear sounds mighty queer. Gosh, they're playing Bartlett is mixed up in those raids. The Indians are supposed to be responsible, but... I reckon there's only one way to find out. And that's to get as close to that window as I can and listen. Last raid you'll have to make, Speed. Suppose them railroad men decide to try again with another wagon train of supply. They won't. This is their last attempt. This train don't get through to Sutter's Gulch. So they've decided to steer clear of the town. Heard them say so myself. Uh, don't like to lay tracks through territory where the Indians ain't friendly, huh? <laughs> yeah, they might if they were given the chance. Being as their supplies and equipment didn't get through, they've got no rails to lay and no tools to lay them with. <laughs> Yeah, I reckon they're in a pretty bad way. And we want to see if they stay that way. No slip-ups tonight, Spade. They had no reason to complain so far. Yeah, you're right. You and the boys have handled them Indians so that nobody suspects we're really behind the raids. I don't mean to forget it. I see that you don't. We're running a big risk. Them railroad men got wise that we were setting the redskins on their wagons. Sure they'd... got them wondering how my wagon trains get through and theirs don't. Now, how'd you explain it to them? Oh, tell them me and the Indians are old friends. I used to run a trading post. Uh, you've come a long way since then, eh, Bartlett? Yep. Yeah. Now I own a fleet of wagons operating between here and Coal City. And I mean to keep them. That's why I'm smashing the railroad's plan to lay tracks through Sutter's Gulch. Folks in town would benefit a lot if the railroad ran through here. I ain't concerned about them. I'm concerned about me. The railroad through here would have ruined my business. People ship things by rail instead of in my wagons. Yeah, I reckon you're right. But I've got something bigger in sight than just owning the Wagon Express. Huh? What do you mean? Someday I figure to own this whole town. Oh, that's a pretty big order. Not for Lane Bartlett, it ain't. You string along with me and you'll get your share. You make it sound convincing. But first, there's a little matter of burning that railroad supply train tonight. Yeah. Who are you and the Redskins pulling the job? Death Pass. Couldn't think of a better place myself. Never get through that ravine alive. Not while they got Cy Blackburn for a guide. He's leading them to their deaths, and they don't know it. And they're paying him for it in the bargain. So are we. Plenty. It's a smart hombre who can collect from both ends, Spade. <laughs> Golly, that wagon train's riding into an ambush. It isn't more the railroad men will be killed. I guess it's up to me. Only the Lone Ranger and Tonto were here. What's that? It sounds like it is Tonto. Tonto, I thought you'd never get here. Uh, me see you on porch. You look like you're not want to be seen there. Yeah. I... Where's the Lone Ranger? Him ride to warn wagon train. Indians attack it tonight. Oh, but then he knows. But I'll bet there's something he doesn't know, and that's who's behind the raids. And who that? I'll explain as we ride. Right now, the important thing is to get to the Lone Ranger. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now 
Now to continue our story. Dusk was extending the slim fingers of shadow across the prairie when in the van of the long caravan of wagons loaded with railroad supplies, which rumbled slowly over the seemingly endless trail towards Sutter's Gulch, Alec Dennison, leader of the train, and Cy Blackburn, the guide, saw a lone horseman riding rapidly toward them on a powerful white stallion. What do you make of him, Blackburn? I don't know. I'm keeping my gun trigger cocked just in case. Must be something important to make him ride so hard. Well, we'll soon find out. Oh, Silver, ho, ho! Masked. He's an outlaw, Mr. Dennison. Hold your fire. I'm not an outlaw. I'm drilling you, mister. No, you're not. But you shot away my rifle. I had no choice. Hey, who are you, stranger? That's not as important as why I'm here. Indians are waiting to ambush the wagon train. Ambush the... Are you sure? It's a trick, Mr. Dennison. They plan to attack you at Death Pass. Death Pass? We're due there in three hours. He's lying, I tell you. It's a trick of some kind. Now, you seem very sure. You're darn tootin', I'm sure. I'm guiding this wagon train, and if there were engines around, I'd know about it. I see. That don't convince me, Blackburn. Engines raided the four other wagon trains we sent through here, and you didn't mention seeing them until they'd stolen the supplies and got away. You're not going to take the word of this masked armor against mine, are you? For all we know, maybe he's fixing to ambushes himself. I'm not taking chances with this shipment. It's got to get through. The only way is to circle the canyon and avoid Death Pass. Circle the canyon? Why, that'll take us miles out of our way. That's all right. It'll fool the Indians. Hey, maybe you're right. Don't listen to him, Mr. Dennison. Death Pass will take us straight into Sutter's Gulch. It'll save time and work. I'm not interested in saving time and work. I'm interested in seeing these supplies arrive. But I'm trying... Don't argue with me, Blackburn. Change the course. I'm taking the masked man's suggestion. All right, boys, turn around. We're circling the canyon. <laughs> Late that night, the wagon train formed a protective circle on the prairie, miles beyond the rim of Death Canyon. Suddenly, the staccato of hoofs was heard, and Tonto and Dan rode into camp. The Lone Ranger listened intently to Dan's story. Lane Bartlett, eh? Yep, and that's not all. The guide of this wagon train is a member of the gang. Are you sure, Dan? You bet. His name's Cy Blackburn. That explains several things. Come along. Uh, oh, we look for guide? Yes, Tonto. Perhaps we can learn more. Oh, golly. To think he was deliberately leading the wagons into an ambush. Howdy, stranger. You're just the man I want to see. Haven't seen Blackburn around recently, have you? I was about to ask you that question. Uh, I reckon that settles it. He's disappeared. Disappeared, but I... Engines! Right in this way! It's a raid! On your feet, boys! It's engines! Hurry up there! Come on! As the Indians, led by the masked renegades, swooped down on the wagon train with wild yells, the railroad men rushed to defend it from the surprise attack. Suddenly, flaming arrows bolted through the shadowy night and thudded into the supply wagons. All around the caravan, tiny fires broke out, a fresh one flaming the moment an old one had been stamped out. Against these seemingly impossible odds, the railroad men fought gallantly. Beat out those flames, men! we got to save the supplies! Hurry with that water, Dan. I'm coming. Here it is. Fire, uh, plenty bad. Make plenty fire. Watch out for that wagon. It's loaded with blasting powder. Blasting powder. Take over here, Dan. You bet. Uh, what you do? Come on, Toto. Uh, he come. Racing to the wagon where the blasting powder was stored, the masked man and the Indian quickly unlatched the door and crept into the dark interior of the huge van. Sometime later, they went around the ring of the defenders, their arms burdened with small tins of blasting powder, to each of which was attacked a short fuse. These they left with the railroad men. Then they told their plan to Alec Dennison. I said, hey, each man here is armed with a can of blasting powder. When I give the word, they heave them smack into their circle of redskins. That's it. Well, I don't know how much damage they'll do. Pretty weak charge in each of them tins. The explosion will frighten the Indians. That's the main thing. <laughs> I reckon it will at that. If all those tins explode close together like they should, it'll scare the engines clear out of their skins. The engines make ready to charge wagons. Uh, this is it. Ready, boys? Well, let them have it! As if catapulted by one arm, the small tins of blasting powder arched through the air into the rapidly closing circle of Indians. To the railroad men who saw death riding toward them in the grinning, painted faces of the savages, the fuses seemed to sputter forever. Then as the Indians closed ranks for a last assault, the earth beneath them exploded. Look at them red skips run! We did it! We turned them back! Ah, but how Indians know wagon train come this way? Who tell him where to attack? I'd say it was Blackburn. Hunter. Dawn was rising over the prairie when, seated with Tonto and Dan by a campfire within the tight circle of wagons, 
the Lone Ranger revealed what the boy had heard to Alec Dennison. Cy Blackburn and Lane Bartlett. I can hardly believe it. Now Bartlett's just about started gold's leading citizen. Yeah, and as wealthy as two. Ah. Lane Bartlett. It don't seem to make sense that he's behind all them engine raids and the railroad wagons. And yet I... Bartlett wants power. He is in particular how he gets it. I reckon you're right, the honorary skunk. Inciting Indians to attack his own people. He ought to be hanged. When he's caught, he will be. Just as the others. They'll hang for the murder of innocent men and women trapped on the wagon train. He'll be caught. I'll promise you that. As soon as we reach town, I'll take that low-down polecat into custody myself. But you can't hold him without proof. Golly, that's right. I don't aim to hold him. I aim to string him up with a rope necktie. No, you won't, Dennison. Huh? Sutter's Gulch has a reputation for law and order. And I won't see you spoil it with a lynching bee. You know of a better way to catch Bartlett? Yes, but I'll need your help. Listen. In the half-light of the daybreak, two horsemen rode wearily through the deserted main street of Sutter's Gulch and dismounted before the hitching rail of the Bartlett Wagon Express. Then, ascending the wooden steps, Spade and Sire Blackburn disappeared into the express office, where Lane Bartlett was waiting. Howdy, boys. How'd it go? It didn't. What do you mean? That fizzed out in a burst of firecrackers. If this is one of your jokes... Yeah, look how hard we're laughing. Why, you fools. Now, wait a minute, boss. You stupid, plundering fools. The last rage you had to make and you fumble it. It wasn't our fault. I was right. Everything was working out slick as we figured. Then this masked man steps in and ruins the picture. What masked man? I don't know who he is. But somehow he got word the engines were waiting to jump the wagon train at Death Pass. So he talks Dennison into taking a long way around the canyon. Yeah. Sai here hightailed it to the pass to tell me their camping site. So we hop up the Redskins with some more fire water and ride there to make the raid. Well? The masked armory again. We're moving in for the kill. When he adds them mule skinners, he blasting powder at the Redskins. Well, after that, you couldn't see him for dust. Yeah. A mask man, eh? Yeah, tall hombre. And greased lightning on the draw. It looks like an outlaw. Sure, why else would he wear a mask? It looks to me like he stepped in just to mess up our play. And make one of his own. What kind of play would he be figuring on? I don't know. Yet. Maybe I can help you. But, boss, it's him. Why, the dirty double cross. Keep it in leather, Spade. I told you he could handle them irons of his like a flash. I... I reckon you heard what we were saying. Yes. You shouldn't leave your doors open. Then I reckon you know we've been trying to figure you out. What's your game, mister? Yeah. If you're on the prowl, what's the idea of going out of your way to help Dennison? When I went to help Dennison, I didn't know who you were. Meaning what? But if I'd known, I'd have acted differently. Ah. Hey, this hombre sounds like he's all right after all, huh, boss? Uh, what difference does it make now? Dennison's got his railroad supplies and equipment through. Yeah, and thanks to that, you can write finished across the Bartlett Wagon Express. With the railroad running through Sutter's Gulch, my wagons haven't got a chance. The railroad isn't running through here yet. Yeah? They haven't even started laying the first track. I'm listening. What's on your mind, mister? Without rails to lay and the tools to lay them, the railroad couldn't begin. I figured that out for myself, mister. What I haven't heard you mention is a way to destroy that equipment. Yeah, how about it? I know a way. You mean you... Oh, I say we... How much do you figure it's worth? Half. What? Half your business, Bartlett. Or nothing. Looks like he's got you, boss. If you let the railroad go through, you're licked anyway. Sure. All right, you're in. Now, let's hear it. The supply wagons are camped in Silver Basin. Yeah, I know the place. About ten miles out of town. Ought to be a cinch to capture them wagons with a surprise attack. Surprise attack with what? Them wagons are strongly guarded. You won't get them engines to follow you again after last night, no matter how much fire water you pour into them. Yeah, I forgot about that. There'll only be a few guards on the wagons tonight. What do you mean? Dennison's letting most of his men ride to town. Why, Savvy? He figures nothing can happen to him after last night, huh? So he's rewarding the boys with a night off. Hey, we could rustle them wagons with the boys and still show a lot more gun smoke than them wagon guards. Yeah. And you'll attack tonight? Yeah, tonight at midnight. And you're riding with us, mister, just so we understand each other. I understand. I'll meet you here. I still can't figure that mask hombre out. Uh, one thing's certain. He sure drives a hard bargain, huh, boss? That's right, Si. But I don't aim for him to live to collect it. Midnight hung over Sutter's Gulch like a heavy pall. Main Street was shrouded in darkness. And in the clump of trees in the rear of Bartlett's Wagon Express... 
the shadowy figures of horsemen met silently and adjusted their masks. Then with a tall man who wore a white hat and a black mask in their lead, the gang rode swiftly towards Silver Basin. Sometime later, they reached their destination and reined their horses quietly to a halt on the brink of a sandy gully. In the pit below, they could see the shadowy outlines of the supply wagons and a few guards standing watch near the flickering campfires. Steady, Silver. Looks like the masked man was right, boss. Yeah, camp's practically deserted. This job ought to be a pushover. That's the trouble with it. Looks too easy. If you're double-crossing us, mister... Lay off, Bartlett. Let's finish what we came for. Yeah, you're first, mister. Very well. Don't open fire till you're sure your shots, boys. And make everyone count. All right, Bartlett. All right, right. Come on, Silver. What are you planning to take care of the masked man, Bartlett? As soon as we open fire in the camp... I've got him square in my gun sights. Before he knows it, he'll have a slug in his back. Come on, get up. Come on. Yep. They've seen us, boss. All right, boys, open up. They can't stop us now. Those wagons are as good as ours. And here's hey, boss, look. Sheriff's posse, they've surrounded the basin. We've been double-crossed. The mask man. I want you, Bartlett. And I want you, you double-dealing coyote. You tricked us into a trap. You tricked yourself. We're supplying all the answers. He gets paid. I'll get you first, Reddy. Get down. Out of my way. Get up, horse. Get up. Stop him. Don't let him get away. I'm coming through. Up that gun. I'll take you with me. Let first. Stop it. Oh. Wing him. Oh, 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 You're under arrest, Bartlett. You and your whole murdering gang. That double dealing pull cat if he hadn't lied to he me. He didn't lie to you, Bartlett. You outsmarted yourself. Dennison did let most of his mule skinners ride to town last night. But only so they could ride back to Silver Basin with me and surprise you and your gang. That's right, Bartlett. You fell for the Lone Ranger's plan, hook, line, and sinker. The Lone Ranger? I'll send the... Just Heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>